let's talk about projectile motion. So in order to start learning projectile motion, I would like to show you a simulation, which I'll put a link in the description. You may want to try it yourself as well. So here is a very famous website called PHET. We'll use a lot of simulation there. Uh, simply, you don't have to install anything when you click into it. And there are a few tabs for under the projectile motion. And you, I want you to try lab. And here I would like to show you uh, some basic idea. So for example, here I got a um, a tower where you can simply shoot out, you know, with different parameters. So it's like a game, uh, like depending on what you like to do. And then you can see uh, the lotus of uh, the whole path of the object that you shoot out. So what I would like to show you is, uh, let's say you have a certain speed with uh, say 10 meter height and then now what I do is uh, I will try to shoot a cannonball that is horizontally and this is how the path look like okay and the second thing that I would like to do is um, I'll keep this path and then I'll now change the initial speed to zero and then let's see what happened if I set the initial speed to zero that is the same as you release the cannonball from the air so basically it's uh, what you learn from the previous video as well when we talk about kinematics in one dimension as i said projectile motion is just simply two dimension where other than the vertical motion you also have horizontal motion one interesting thing i want to show you here is uh, here is a um, certain meter where it tells you the time and range is horizontal movement so as in horizontally how much displacement it is height is apparently for the vertical so here let's take a look this is 0 0.5 seconds and the range is 9 and the height is 8.77 let's take a look of the other path on the left where we just simply release it you can see for the same time, 0 0.5 seconds, the height is the same, 8.77. Range is zero, of course, because it didn't move horizontally at all. Uh, let's take a look again, right? It's the same, 8.77. What about the next one? 0 0.6 second, we have 8.23. 0 0.6 second, we have 8.23 meter, same. 0 0.7 second, 7.6. 0 0.7 seconds, 7.6, 7 so it's exactly the same vertically. And let's maybe look at uh, another point. So 1.2 seconds after it's being shot, it, uh, the height is 2.94. And same here, 1.2 seconds, the height is 2.94. So hopefully with this simulation, of course you can try it yourself, I would like to show you that uh, no matter how you shoot horizontally, it does not affect the vertical motion if you shoot with a zero degree of course if you try to say shoot um say with um 30 degree like this oops not zero uh i think the speed was like actually i forgot say 16 actually it doesn't matter um you can see of course this is the same i mean it's, it's different because you find out uh the uh, horizontal movement of course it's different because say for 0 0.1 second it is 1.39 but this one is 1.8 because apparently some of the speed has already been um, kind of go into the vertical motion instead at the same time you don't find the height is the same because apparently this would move up first and then come back down and that is simply because uh, for the third path that I make here it has a certain vertical velocity well for the first two that i made because i was shooting it with a horizontal like literally zero degree and therefore vertically it does not have any velocity while for if i simply set it to zero and then simply drop of course it does not have any initial vertical velocity also so that makes a difference so the main takeaways for you from the simulation i hope is um the horizontal motion and the vertical motion they are simply independent so this is the most important thing that you need to remember for projectile motion and in fact when we learn about other things in physics uh, this would still hold for all the cases like when we learn about forces 
for, uh, for x and y axis, they will be independent of each other. So you may ask, so how do we actually uh, do calculation then if it is two dimension? So I would say, um, I will of course later on do some exercise with you, but then the basic idea I'm going to show you right now in general. Um, very likely you will have to say, have a situation where you have a certain velocity, uh, initial velocity, maybe say u, and then uh, it may have a certain angle with the horizontal or vertical, is, it really doesn't matter. Like You can still do the trigonometry by yourself. So what you need to do is uh, you have to decompose this the factor because uh, velocity is a factor in physics, right? And so uh, you are allowed to decompose it into two direction. One is horizontal and one is vertical. And then after you have decomposed this into uh, the two components, then you can do it like how you do in the previous kinematics question. So for decomposing, what you have to do is simply think about the trigonometry. When you try to get this slanted vector into a horizontal one and another one that is vertical, then um, you can have, say, I will call this ux, I'll call this uy. And you should be able to find using trigonometry that ux equals to u cosine theta and uy equals to u sine theta. Okay, so this is something that if you are, um, by the time you study more and more physics, you should be able to work it out directly. In a case where you cannot figure out cosine and sine directly, let me show you uh, how to do it exactly. So from uh, trigonometry that you learn in mathematics uh, you should learn like if I call this uh, a b c you should be able to to call it as uh, cosine theta equals to b over a right so simply this is the definition of cosine theta uh, I can't explain further if I ask, uh, why is it b over I can't explain to you this is the definition simply and so in that case that will be u in our case uh, ux over u and so if you try to rearrange it then you should find ux equals to u cosine theta basically is the first thing that I find I wrote here okay so similarly you should be able to find sine represent sine theta using the definition itself which is c over a and then in our case will be uy over u and so again you should be able to find the second equation that we have here, which is u sine theta equals to u1, if you simply rearrange it. All right, and so uh, afterwards, what you have to do is simply using those, uh, after you got these two, then you can simply use the horizontal um, view and vertical view, and then apply the kinematics equation, which you learn those four equations that you have uh, in the previous session then you should be able to do it. So let's take a look of the exercise in the next video.